From the tunnel of light to encounters with deceased loved ones, NDEs have puzzled scientists and philosophers for centuries. Are they mere hallucinations or glimpses into an afterlife? In this video, we'll present a scientific approach to unravel this mystery. We'll walk through the research methods used to study NDEs, including the latest neuroimaging studies. We'll cover the neuroscience of dying brains, Buddhist meditators, psychedelics like DMT and ketamine, REM sleep intrusion, and how gamma waves are linked to them all. By the end, you'll have a nuanced understanding of how science is tackling one of the most profound mysteries of human existence. I'm Carlos Farias, and my life mission is to answer the biggest question. Why are we here? I study metaphysics, and along with you, learn from the brightest minds on the planet. Imagine floating above your own body, watching doctors frantically work to revive you. Suddenly, you're enveloped in a warm, comforting light, feeling a sense of peace and unity with the universe. This is just one example of a near-death experience, a phenomenon that has captivated researchers and the public alike. The American Psychological Association defines near-death experiences as profound psychological events with transcendental and mystical elements, typically occurring to individuals close to death or in situations of intense physical or emotional danger. We'll start with the research on NDE phenomenology, which is the subjective experiences reported by individuals who nearly died. While these experiences often carry profound spiritual significance for those who undergo them, they present a unique challenge for scientific inquiry. How can we objectively study something so inherently untimely and experiential? This is an incredibly useful 3D graph for comparing NDEs with other conscious states. Axes are at the left and bottom. As you can see, NDEs are located in the top left of the grid a fully aware state but low in wakefulness and connectedness to the outside world. The graph includes a wide range of conscious states, including normal consciousness in the top right corner, sleep states in the center left, and near-death-like experiences, which span across the top. We'll return to this graph later. Near-death experiences typically follow a common pattern, though not all individuals report every element. The most frequently reported features include one, a sensation of floating outside one's body and witnessing the scene from above. Two, moving through a dark tunnel towards three, an intense, welcoming, bright light. Four, meeting deceased loved ones or spiritual entities. Five, an overwhelming sense of peace, acceptance, and love. Six, a review of significant life events and actions. Seven, gaining insights of knowledge about life and the universe. 8. A perception that time is altered or does not exist. 9. A decision or feeling of being sent back to life. And 10. A lasting change in attitudes, beliefs, or life priorities after the experience. Interestingly, while these elements remain consistent across cultures, the specific imagery often reflects an individual's cultural background. For instance, Western experiencers might see angels or Jesus Christ, while Hindus may perceive messengers of the god of death. Somewhat surprisingly, religious people are no more likely to have NDEs compared to the non-religious. The accuracy of out-of-body reports on real-world events is astonishing. In a study by Janice Holden, 92 out of 100 near-death experiencers provided accurate descriptions of events they supposedly couldn't have known about, raising doubts about consciousness being solely tied to the brain. One particularly intriguing aspect of NDEs is the occurrence of peak and Darian experiences, where individuals report encountering deceased people they were unaware had passed away. After returning to their bodies, these individuals later discovered that the loved ones they encountered during their NDE had indeed died, validating their experiences and adding layers of meaning to their NDEs. And NDEs are more prevalent than you might think. While exact figures vary, studies suggest that between 10 to 20% of people who come close to death report having an NDE. These experiences often lead to profound psychological and behavioral changes, including increased compassion, reduced fear of death, and a greater appreciation for life. To systematically study NDEs, researchers have standardized tools like the NDE scale. Created by Bruce Grayson, it assesses the intensity and characteristics of NDEs across cognitive, affective, and paranormal components. Scores range from 0 to 32, with a score of 7 or higher indicating a near-death experience. 
As we dive deeper into the neuroscience of dying brains, we must consider what physiological processes could explain these profound experiences. Are they merely hallucinations produced by a stressed brain, or do they point to something more fundamental about consciousness itself? These questions drive researchers to explore the intricate workings of the brain during its most vulnerable moments. For centuries, the scientific communities held a firm belief about death. Once the heart stops, brain activity ceases almost immediately. Without oxygen supplied by blood flow, neurons would quickly become inactive. However, recent research has turned this assumption on its head, revealing surprising levels of brain activity in clinically dead patients. Research led by Jimo Borjigan has shown that even after cardiac arrest, certain brain regions exhibit synchronized high-frequency electrical activity. The dying brain likely experiences a complex interplay of electrical activity in the temporal, parietal, and occipital lobes that could correlate with NDEs. The brain may be processing information and integrating experiences even as it approaches death, potentially explaining the mystical narratives often reported. One of the most fascinating aspects of this research is the discovery of persistent gamma oscillations in dead brains. Gamma waves between 30 and 100 hertz are associated with high-level cognitive functions and conscious perception. The presence of these oscillations in the dying brain appears to align with the findings of a three-year-long longitudinal study with Buddhist meditators, straight from the paper. During deep meditation, these Buddhists, one, were consciously aware of experiencing NDE states, two, retained volitional control over the content and duration of NDEs, and three, elicited a rich array of non-worldly encounters and spiritual experiences. Increased gamma band activity has been measured in advanced meditation practitioners both during and following meditation. Indeed, when meditators were asked to mentally visualize and emotionally connect with encountering a being of light typical of an NDE, they displayed greater gamma wave activity. Grounding this topic a bit, the phenomenon of NDEs doesn't seem limited to meditation or medical emergencies. Test pilots and astronauts experiencing extreme G-forces have reported remarkably similar experiences to traditional NDEs. During high G maneuvers, when blood is forcefully pushed away from the brain, pilots often describe out-of-body sensations, time distortion, and altered states of consciousness that mirror NDEs. G-force-induced loss of consciousness can trigger dreamlike states, detachment from physical reality, and vivid perceptual shifts, phenomena strikingly similar to NDEs. These accounts provide a unique scientific context, suggesting that extreme physiological stress can trigger experiences that transcend traditional medical or mystical near-death scenarios. As we continue to explore NDEs, we must consider the potential implications for our understanding of consciousness. Could heightened gamma brain activity during dying be responsible for the profound experiences reported by NDEers? This question leads us to examine the role of neurotransmitters in altered states of consciousness, which may provide insights into the mechanisms behind these extraordinary experiences. But first, if you're enjoying this video, please subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you. NN-dimethyltryptamine, commonly known as DMT, has earned the moniker spirit molecule due to its profound effects on consciousness. This powerful psychedelic has drawn significant attention in the field of NDE research alongside other substances like ketamine and salvia divinorum, which we'll cover in a bit. Researchers think there's a significant link between these compounds and NDEs. A study by Charlotte Marshall and colleagues found a striking overlap between DMT experiences and NDEs. Participants in both groups described sensations of entering an unearthly realm, separating from their body, encountering mystical beings, and seeing bright light. They also reported feelings of peace, unity, and joy. The pharmacology of DMT provides some insight into its effects on consciousness. It primarily interacts with serotonin receptors, particularly the serotonin 2A receptor, which is implicated in the generation of mystical experiences and altered states of consciousness. This mechanism of action aligns with the profound alterations in perception and cognition reported during both DMT trips and NDEs. There's a hypothesis that endogenous DMT is produced in the body during stress or near-death states, 
supported by research indicating a surge of neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine during the dying process. This neurochemical shift may coincide with the release of endogenous DMT. However, the DMT hypothesis remains controversial. Experts like Kevin Nelson argue that NDEs can be explained through neurophysiological mechanisms, such as the brain's response to hypoxia or ischemia during critical medical events. In a recent article in Consciousness and Cognition, Enzo Tagliazucci and his team investigated which psychedelic substances most closely resemble NDEs. They reviewed over 15,000 reports from users of 165 psychoactive drugs and compared those with 625 accounts of NDEs, using algorithms to identify common themes between the two sets of experiences. The results showed that while substances like mushrooms and LSD share similarities with NDEs, they did not rank highest. Ketamine emerged as the leading substance, followed by salvia divinorum. The next five most similar compounds are all serotonergic, including two forms of DMT. I'm shocked that ayahuasca is middle of the pack, just behind cannabis. DMT is the active ingredient in the eye of brew. Ketamine, an anesthetic with dissociative properties, can induce out-of-body experiences and feelings of detachment similar to those reported in NDEs. Ketamine is glutamatergic and acts on NMDA receptors. A lexical analysis of reports found a striking similarity between the top-ranking terms for NDEs at the top here and ketamine trips shown in the middle. Note the similarities of their word clouds. Returning back to the consciousness space chart from earlier, note that ketamine-induced anesthesia is the closest of the 12 states to NDEs. As far as we know though, ketamine is not naturally produced in the body while DMT is. Salvia divinorum, a plant with hallucinogenic properties, can produce intense, short-lived alterations in consciousness that some users compare to near-death states. Salvia contains a potent and selective kappa receptor agonist. While the similarities between psychedelics and NDEs are intriguing, more research is needed to establish a definitive link. Other neurotransmitters, such as endorphins and serotonin, have also been proposed to play a role in NDEs. As we continue to explore the neurochemical basis of NDEs, another intriguing possibility emerges. Could these phenomena be related to processes occurring during normal sleep? This brings us to the concept of REM sleep intrusion, a fascinating area of research that may provide further insights into the nature of NDEs. You wake up in bed suddenly, heart racing, convinced you are falling through space. For a moment, the boundary between dream and reality blurs. This vivid experience bears a striking resemblance to elements of NDEs, and it's no coincidence. The latest research implies that the mechanisms behind rapid eye movement, or REM sleep, may play a crucial role in generating NDEs. Individuals with a history of sleep disorders, particularly those prone to REM sleep intrusion, report NDEs at higher rates. REM sleep intrusion occurs when aspects of REM sleep, such as vivid dreaming or sleep paralysis, intrude into waking consciousness. Think states like hypnagogia and sleepwalking. This phenomenon has captured the attention of NDE researchers due to its potential explanatory power. A 2019 study found a significant association between NDEs and REM sleep intrusion, with 47% of near-death experiencers reporting REM sleep intrusion compared to only 14% of those individuals who've never had an NDE. The neurophysiology of REM sleep shares remarkable similarities with features commonly reported in NDEs. The brain regions activated during REM sleep, especially the temporoparietal junction, are implicated in the experiences reported during NDEs. One of the most intriguing parallels between REM sleep and NDEs is the presence of high-frequency gamma activity in the brain. As we covered earlier, gamma activity suggests a neurological basis for the vivid and often spiritual experiences reported during NDEs. Neuroanatomical models further strengthen this hypothesis. The temporal lobe, which is heavily involved in REM sleep, may play a critical role in generating NDE-like states. This brain region is associated with the sensation of leaving the body and the perception of time distortion, both common features of NDEs. While the REM intrusion hypothesis offers a compelling explanation for many aspects of NDEs, it's important to note that it doesn't account for all reported features. 
The hypothesis is particularly strong in explaining the perceptual and cognitive aspects of NDEs, but may fall short in addressing the profound emotional and transformative effects often reported by experiencers. The vast majority of NDEers say that their trips are not like dreams at all, but rather feel more real than real. As we continue to unravel the mysteries of consciousness, the study of REM sleep intrusion and its relationship to NDEs opens up exciting new avenues for research. What other altered states of consciousness might share neurological mechanisms with NDEs? And how might this research inform our understanding of consciousness itself? The scientific exploration of NDEs has yielded remarkable insights into the nature of consciousness and the dying process. Research has revealed unexpected brain activity during clinical death, challenging our understanding of when consciousness truly ends. The similarities between NDEs, psychedelic trips, and REM sleep states suggest common neurological mechanisms. After doing all this research, I'm most intrigued by the gamma wave connection. I'm reminded of Dobzhansky's quote, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. Some researchers propose that NDEs could be a last ditch survival tactic. Perhaps other animals on the brink of death have many NDEs as well. We no longer question whether NDEs are real, but we'll continue to debate what causes them. Leave a comment below with your thoughts. And if anyone watching this has had a near-death experience, please feel free to share it. And if you enjoyed this, I think you'll like my related video on Carl Jung's Mythopoetic Red Book. Thank you for watching.